Let's get this sorted. Noisy, uh, noisy laptop today. We uh, get some painting water sorted. Nom, 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 nom. Where are we? This one. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. This is the latest in our Wednesday live streams. Where we are painting, uh, well, I started painting some Spanish. Uh, hello, Glenn. Uh, let's get everything sorted. A little bit late today. I was a bit late leaving work. We had a, uh, a patient who needed transport and they, uh, they didn't decide to turn up. So that was uh, exciting. Right. So today we are going to try and do two things. The first thing is we're going to do the facings. And the second thing we're going to do is, if we get a chance, we're going to do the bear skins. Now, as I said before, as I learned from uh, doing these live streams, they're not bear skins, they're in fact seal skin. But uh, I will continue to be calling them uh, 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 bear skins anyway, because uh, yeah, that, that's how we know what we're talking about. Grenadiers, they wear bear skins, so there you go. So I've called this video Facings the Facts, because that is what we are going to do now. I did have in my brain, uh, which is always a dangerous place to have stuff. Uh, one second. Um, I did have in my brain the exact regiment it was going to be, and I have subsequently forgotten. Now, as I said before, the plan is to do the uh, La Romana's division that took part in the attack on Denmark. So I am going to get up uh, Nafsinger's collection of Napoleonic orders of battle. That's the one I'm after. And I want um, dum, 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 1808, I guess it will be. Uh, 1808, rest of Europe. Uh, Spanish division in Denmark. There we are. So they are. I'm going to start off with the first division. And they consist of... Two line infantry regiments, one light infantry regiment, the uh, medium to heavy cavalry regiment, and I don't know what the other one is, the, the infante cavalry regiment. I guess that would probably be another heavy cavalry regiment. So the two line regiments are the Zamoras. Now, I'm going to do those guys, but I'm not going to start with them. These guys are going to be the other one, which is the Asturias regiment. Now, they had um, like an apple green type facing. So that's what I'm going to use here. I'm going to be using Strachan Green from Games Workshop. Now, this is the first, in quotes, proper paint that I'm going to be using on these figures. Everything else has been contrast so far. But uh, we're going to go with them. I've also got some white, and I'm going to use that on the cross straps. Now, I don't normally use Citadel White. I normally use uh, Vallejo White for uh, the simple reason that Games Workshop White is a bit cack. However... Uh, I can't find it. I don't know what I've done with it. So I managed to pull out one of my old uh, pots of white Games Workshop paint. And when we get to it, I think we'll probably see why I don't use it anymore. So let's get started with the um, uh, with the facings. That's going to be the majority of today's episode. Uh, I'll probably do about an hour. Um, one of the things with these... Um, these live streams at the moment is I'm coming straight from work, getting changed, and then uh, starting these live streams, which is great. I don't mind doing it, but it does mean that by sort of seven, half seven, I'm absolutely Hank Marvin. So what I think I might do in the future is because we've got some, um, uh, some more light now. Now we've got these light evenings is I might end up doing the starting the live streams at 7 o'clock, British summer time, uh, and then that will allow me a chance to get some din-dins in, and we can maybe run for a little bit longer than just an hour. Let me know if that would suit you, or if uh, 7 o'clock would be too late for you. 
Um, I found out the other day. So for those of you who aren't in the UK, uh, the UK, we have, we, we're st we still are very classist. We have a very uh, strict class structure here. And I found out that uh, sort of poor people eat early and the wealthy people eat later. So I guess that makes me a poor person because I like my dinner around about six o'clock. There. there you go. So I'm just going to crack on with the facings here. Now I've got my uh, Osprey Menace Arms. I just want to quickly check something. So we we saw the other day that uh, we're not doing... Uh, oh, no, his collar's done. But uh, he might be cavalry, actually. Now let's try some infantry. Uh, here we are. In fact, here's a Zamora officer that we're not doing. But uh, there you go. So his cuffs and the cuffs that go back here. So they're going to be green. Obviously, his bib here at the front is, but his collar is not. So that's what we are looking for here. This um, this first division is actually going to be quite a good, nice little formation to do. Because it's got cavalry, infantry. It's got line infantry. It's got light infantry. It's got uh, got a little bit of everything. So it's a nice, uh, nice formation to do. And also, with them being trained by the French... They're not as dreadful as the rest of the Spanish army. I'm going to look at the rules for them. I think I'm going to tweak them for the Romano's division because they were a little bit better. I mean, the tweak could be something as simple as just making the uh, the commander strategy rating 7 instead of 6. doesn't have to be anything, uh, anything mega mega. We'll have to see what General Dan lets me get away with. So there we go. Now, one of the problems with this apple green is it doesn't really show up that well against the white. But uh, that's OK. I'm going to put a green wash on it later. Hopefully the green wash will make it stand out a little bit more. I might even put a cheeky green glaze on there as well just to deepen the uh, just to deepen the green. So, oh, Christopher, don't you worry, my friend. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome back. Yeah. Dan, yes, I am on time. Exactly. You see, there you go, man. You have a little faith. I'm on time like a uh, like an Austrian, not a Prussian, man. So there we go. I want to have a bit of a discussion with you chaps this afternoon or this evening, I guess. Um I, those of you who've seen the video I did at the weekend, I talked about the minor powers. Now, uh, one thing quickly is I said in that video that it was all well and good for the British and the French to talk about the minor powers because they had them fighting alongside their armies, whereas some of the other ones, it might be a little bit more difficult. Well, that was completely not true, was it? The Prussians, they fought alongside the Saxons in 1806. So if you've got an 1806 Prussian army, you can definitely bung some Saxons in there. Uh, and the Russians fought alongside the survivors of the Prussian army and the Yenna campaign in 1807 and 1808 when they were fighting at Halesburg. Particularly Halesburg, the Prussians fought quite well there. And at uh, Friedland, I think there were some, but maybe not many. So, uh, yeah, no, no, so there's still, uh, still options there. Uh, now, you may end up doing sort of 1815 uniform Prussians because they're the ones that you can find. I, I literally don't think anyone will care. Uh, I certainly would do that. Uh, hello, Barry. Nice to see you again, buddy. Yes, uh, please do hit that like button if you uh, if you are so inclined or if the dislike button if you uh, if you don't like the content. Uh, no one can see them anymore anyway, unless you've got the... Um, uh, oh, actually, hang on. It says on my thing, dislikes disabled. Oh, dear. I don't know why that is. I certainly didn't. Uh, I certainly didn't do that. Oh, there you go. I can uh, <laughs> I can dislike my own video. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we were talking about the, uh, the minor powers. Now, someone took great exception to me referring to uh, Saxony and Bavaria as minor powers. Um, oh, yes, mate. If you've not got a license for uh, 
to have your dinner at the correct time, you're in deep, deep trouble. Uh, yeah, so um, so the the um, I refer to the Bavarians and the Saxons as a minor power or minor powers, and one chap took great exception to that, saying that it was uh, usual British. Um, what was the word he used? The usual British, um, uh, sort of like you know, um, uh, arrogance, basically. Uh, he basically said I was being a racist, um, which I don't think I was. Uh, my, um, my sort of way of terming them as a minor power and a major power is that the armies of uh, the major power, well, the army of the minor powers, they were unable to project their military will onto other nations, uh, whereas the major powers obviously could. So, yeah, if you want to include France as a major power, well, they could project their military will on the entirety of Europe. Britain the same. Um, you know, things like that. I mean, America, would that be a uh, a minor power? I guess, you know, they'd had the first Barbary War. Uh, by this point, they were projecting their power to North Africa. So maybe I was a little, a little unfair there. I would say that they weren't on the same scale as Austria, Russia, France or Britain, though. Uh, Archie, yes, I keep, I, you know what, I keep getting people sending me photos, and I've not really done anything with them yet, so uh, yes, please do send them to the Napoleonic Wargamer at gmail.com, I think, or .co.uk, I think it's .com, uh, yes, 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 I will use them in a video at some point, I may even end up doing a, um, a video just on the models that people have sent in, um, that might be uh, a way around it. But yeah, so what 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 are people's thoughts on minor powers and major powers? What would you have different major powers? Would you suggest that a country that I didn't think was a major power uh, might be? Uh, would you think you know maybe I was wrong with saying that Portugal were a minor power or um, or you know like, as I say Bavaria, Saxony, something like that? Let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. Let's have a bit a bit of a discussion. Uh, for Austria, you would have the Hungarian insurrection as minor powers. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I guess if you're doing that, you you could also include um, the Vandy, uh, the Haitians, uh, these sort of insurrectionists that uh, that rose up. Uh, the Haitian uh, Revolution actually is something that I would I really want to do a focus on. Uh, maybe the October focus. Uh, October in the UK is Black History Month. Now I don't necessarily uh, always go in with these things, but it'd be a nice tie-in to um, to do uh, the Haitian Revolution, which is absolutely fascinating. It's uh, again, it's, I find I always find with Napoleonic stuff, I don't know that much about something, so I think it's a bit lame. Otherwise, I would know more about it. And then when I start researching it, I, it just opens up into it's always really interesting i'm doing a um the script at the moment for the next napoleonic figures video and this guy i i mean i'd heard the name but i knew literally nothing about him i heard of his involvement in something after the napoleonic wars and thought mm, okay i wonder if there's uh there's more to this guy than i thought and yeah is there ever more to this guy than i thought he's a fascinating guy i'm not giving uh not giving anything away but um, I think you'll be really, uh, uh, really interested when the video comes out. Probably won't be this weekend because I don't think I'm going to get a chance to finish it this week. So it may end up being uh, in, in a fortnight or so. Uh, the general consensus is fine. Five big major powers and everyone else. I mean, that's, that's sort of where I was at with it. Um, I wasn't entirely certain why he got so upset but uh you know what he's he is his opinion is is as valid as anyone else's so uh i'm certainly not belittling him that was his uh his opinion uh, haitian revolution would be so cool yeah no it did i i've seen so i keep thinking about skirmish games i keep thinking about napoleonic skirmish 
and heading in that direction. Uh, I'd use my Lord of the Sharp rules, uh, which I still, I know I say this every time I mention them, I still haven't really got them into a publishable format yet. They're sort of very loose in the air, so what feels what feels right. But um, yeah, uh, the Haitian Revolution would be great because um, it is a lot of uh, very small actions. Uh, you know, maybe half a dozen rebels being chased by a dozen French soldiers through the uh, uh, through the sugar plantations and things like that. You could do a really cool two you know two foot by two foot table or slightly bigger, maybe three foot square. Uh, you could get a really really some really cool games out of a uh, a Napoleonic sugar plantation uh, battlefield. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Okay, so the Swedish Americans and most German states minor powers. Yeah, I think that's fair. Enough. I mean, for me, places like Cleveburg and um, even Nassau before um, eighteen fifteen, I, I I wouldn't even consider them powers at all, to be honest. Um, they yeah, yeah. In the same way, I guess that uh, you know um, Manchester United or Man City are football clubs. And the team from the Dog and Duck is a uh, is a football club. They're they're not really comparable, are they? Uh, I'm just checking something in the Osprey book again. Um, dum, 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 dum. And it's the turnbacks I'm looking at. Is it that do they full turnbacks that color, or is it just the edges? Um, there's not really a picture. In here, I have to say, this is not one of the best Osprey books. Um, let's just go to the the facing show on color cuff, turn back, turn back piping. Right, okay, so yeah, I thought it was. So, when we turn over and we're going to do the turn backs, it's just the edges of the turn backs that we're going to do. Now, I may end up just painting the whole turn back, sort of very similar to how the French had them. Uh, but for now, we'll just do the uh, just do the edges. Oh, it's ice cream van. That's the first time I've heard that this year. I saw a West Indies game many, many years ago with homemade ships and islands. Yeah, well, I mean that's the uh, that's the the obvious uh, bonus, isn't it? Is ships. I think um, uh, you add ships to any table, and it's always going to look awesome. That's way too thick on his turn back there, but never mind. I can always go back in and um, and thin these uh, turn back edgings with white paint. Now, if I'm honest, I probably won't, but. Uh, that's always a possibility. Don't worry if you're not as neat as you would like to be when doing things like the edging of the turn backs, because you can always go back in and uh, and thin that line down by painting the white over the top of it. Put more green on his cuff there. Let's deepen the green a little bit. Probably do with using a smaller brush, to be fair. But uh, this one's not too bad. This uh, this is a very old Games Workshop brush. It seems to be uh, to be holding up okay. Um, FYI, I've met some Bavarians who are very independent. Yes, now that's true. Uh, General Dan went to uh, Bavaria last year, actually. So um, he's uh, he probably knows more about the Bavarians than I do. I'm not sure if he went to their um, their military museum. I know he had his goblins with him, so uh, and his wife. So uh, he may not have had the full uh, the full freedom. Yep. I would say it depends on the context. I in terms of the Napoleon was US would be a minor power, but the War of eighty two is a major power. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's a fair way of looking at it. It's it's all um, it's all relative, isn't it? I suppose. 
I guess in the War of 1812, if you're looking at minor powers, you'd be looking at things like uh, uh, Tecumseh in the Canadians and things like that. So He's another fascinating guy, Tecumseh. I've got a, um, well, quite a big book on him uh, on my bookshelf in front of me. It must be a good 400 pages. He's just finding the time to get around to uh, to reading it and uh, and paring it down. He's a fascinating dude. I'm sure there's a lot more known about him in America than there is in uh, in Europe. For those who don't know, he was a um, an Indian leader. It's all like you know, Sitting Bull or uh, one of these guys who would come later. But he was from the uh, the the Indians who lived in the forests in uh you know the, the canadian border and he uh he tried to forge a nation of indians and there was a uh one instance where the they were sort of fighting alongside the british and he told the british commander to attack the americans and the british commander said well no because uh because you know I, I don't think we can win so the uh, tecumseh said that if we don't i'm i'm gonna kill you <laughs> so i like, oh, see so uh yeah, no, he's a, he's an interesting dude. One who, uh, again, like I say, he's not really that well known. Yeah, I mean, but well, Bavaria had. Um, if uh, it's a shame that uh, Alex from Storm of Steel's not here, he'll know far more about this than me. But it's my understanding that at the start of the First World War. The Bavarian army was still nominally nom, nom, bleh, nominally uh, separate from the German army. Uh, now, I don't know that much about it. As I say, Alex from Storm of Steel, he, uh, he would be the guy to speak to about this. But he, um, yeah, I think um, uh, they, they still had the sky blue uniforms. As as opposed to the Germans who had the uh, like the field grey, so um, they were still definitely uh, definitely separate in the First World War. So yeah, the Bavarians I think they became more of a thing later, but uh, I certainly think during the Napoleonic Wars they were not quite the uh, the major power that perhaps they would become later. So I'm just going in and I'm just um, just knocking back these. Um, the areas where I've put it on a little bit too thick. There we go. I'm actually not planning on highlighting the uh, the uniforms very much because I want the... So the grey I've used is Corax White, which is slightly grey. Um, and I want that to be the uniform colour. don't want it to be white. I want it to be slightly grey. And then I'm going to go over the straps and the belts with actual white. Um, and that's going to make them pop, hopefully. And I certainly know that's what Dan did with his Austrians. I've seen it done before. It's a way of differentiating cloth and, um, you know, I mean, uh, organic, by which I mean sort of cloth, and inorganic, by which I mean leather. And obviously leather is organic. But um, it's sort of, it, it's harder, rather. So the, uh, they used to use chalk to whiten their, uh, their straps. So that's um, that's the effect I want to go for. Also, any uh, bits that we accidentally get. So here you can see I've gone onto the strap of the green. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that because I'm going to be uh, to be painting over that anyway. Right, there we go. Now, one thing I'm not a hundred percent sure of is whether Spanish standard bearers would wear gloves. I'm going to say that they did, which is why I've not painted the flesh on these hands. Um, I don't know. There we go. Along there. That's good. Happy with that. Now, looking at the Osprey, the officers, which would include the standard bearers, uh, their tails were fully the facing colour, so... That makes those a little bit easier. So I can just bash the whole uh, the whole thing then. Well, that reminds me of the other ones. I need to do the front, don't I? The facings where they uh, they go around the front. Oh, 
Hmm, it sounds like a large bee has just come in. But like a Chinook, it's floating. So what's everyone working on today? Any uh, plans for the Easter Bank holiday weekend? Any big battles going on? I am going to do a review of the troops later on. I'm sorting out some figures for a battle which will hopefully be on the channel in the not-too-distant future. Uh, but this weekend, I'm actually going to Warhammer World on the Monday. I'm in part of a, camp a Warhammer campaign, which uh, I may end up dropping out of, because it's a huge time commitment I just can't really make. Uh, but this is going to be my first battle of my empire against Chaos Dwarves. Now, you don't see Chaos Dwarves very often, uh, but luckily, I've used them quite a lot. So I'm uh, I'm fairly confident that despite being outnumbered, um, I should be okay. Uh, how are the Cossacks come out? The Cossacks are pretty much done. I need to uh, bend the hands around the lances and then probably end up repainting the hands. And some of the bases have gone... Um, the paint rubbed off the edges of the bases. I think they might have been... Uh, um, I think my bases may have been from the mysterious east. So um, I think that might be why the paint's rubbed off. But uh, yeah, no, the Cossacks are coming along very well. Thank you, Dan. Still working on the white bits for my 89 French. The snow, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of white on them. It's interesting, the French are le bleu. Because uh, when you paint them, it feels like they're le blanc. I don't know about, uh, about anything else. Packing on with some World War One British and Germans, very good. Are they the uh, the War Games Atlantic ones? I bought uh, uh, I bought a while ago an army of uh, Great War miniatures British, and I've got them all glued on bases. I've got them all base coated and washed. I just need to uh, to finish them off. They probably I could probably get the whole army done in a weekend, but uh, it's just having a spare weekend. Uh, Shane Smith. Well, thank you very much, Shane. I um, thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, Irish Brigade for the Epic ATW. That'd be cool. That'd be very cool. I've just uh, this week actually. I've just finished my uh, first battalion of British for Epic uh, Napoleonics. Now, uh, don't uh, don't worry too much. It was the the unit I got free on the front of uh, War Games Illustrated. So I've not quite uh, gone full tilt into it yet. But having painted that one battalion, I uh, I can definitely see that growing to uh, at least a brigade, probably a division. Uh, I thought about converting them to have stovepipe shakos and doing peninsula, but uh, I really didn't care, care enough for that. So they'll just be wearing... Uh, Belgics in the uh, in the peninsula. Are you doing great war as well? Yeah, no, they they are lovely, lovely minis. I've got some foot saw. They're very nice as well, but uh, unfortunately, they've uh, their first war range has been rather gutted recently. I think they're focusing more on the games that they do, so uh, Mortal Gods and uh, Test of Honor. Both good games, though. I played um, uh, Test of Honor many years ago, uh, and I played Mortal Gods with Dan uh, a few weeks ago. Actually, it was a good, uh, it was a good game. Right now, let's get these going on over here. Brush has seriously lost his point there. Let's try that one again. So there we go. I 
may end up doing a little bit off camera guys so if i do apologies in advance but uh, it's these areas here on the facings where it just goes around the side it's difficult to do from this angle because the uh, the camera is stopping me getting the paintbrush in the uh, in the angle that i ideally want it to be so i may end up doing a uh, a minute or so off camera but i'll try and get to i'll try and do everything else first I'm being a little uh, impressionistic with the uh, the painting here. It's sort of you know it's, it's roughly in the right area. And this guy on the end, yeah, I'm going to do him off camera. Sorry. There we are. Let's quickly do the other side. I've got him here. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I need to do cuffs as well. Now, one thing I'm not sure with these guys is if their facings are green, does that mean that the uh, the sock here is green as well? Uh, I've not seen any green ones before. I've only ever seen red and black. But I have to confess, I'm certainly no... Uh, I'm not going to pretend I've seen every Spanish regiment out there, so... I'm going to leave them white for now, and then um, I will uh, come back to them later. Uh, I'm curious, speaking of minor powers, have you got any interest in the Persian army of the period? You know what, Alid? That is, uh, today, in the script I've been writing, I have actually just been uh, talking about the, uh, the 1796 campaign against the Qajar Persians. And uh, I've got my Ottomans, and the Persians are sort of one step into the past from the ottomans so i think they're really cool models really cool models i really like them but uh, because i've got my ottoman army i can't see myself getting a persian army but if i didn't have the ottomans then i think the persians could be a definite possibility right uh, now it's worth saying that the ottomans fought the persians as well so uh, uh it's, it's not as if they're mutually exclusive But uh, no, the Persians are very, very cool. They get elephants, and more importantly, I, actually, I don't know, they get, they do get camels. I, I do love camels. But uh, I don't think they're as cool as elephants, actually. So yeah, no, actually, I think the elephants are cooler than the camels in the uh, the Persian army's case. I dread to think what happens when you uh, hit an elephant with a cannonball, though. I, think that's, uh, I like elephants, so I'm trying not to think about that too much. Because uh, I imagine it's very unpleasant. My bolts in the uh, from the Romans were uh, bad enough, but uh, ooh, yeah, no. Uh, so you did a minor nations video, thank you. Oh, no, that's quite all right, Russian quill. I hope to finish my 1808 Swedish. Oh, well, there you go. So, uh, Colin, I'll have to uh, match my uh, match you with my lancers now. I'll have to match you with my Spanish. I'm not sure they actually did any fighting, to be fair. In the uh, in the Danish campaign, uh, I don't think they did. But they were sort of they were up there. They were in the parish. But uh, I guess it's the Russians who would be the main uh, the main opponents of the Swedes. Persians over Ottomans, anything. <laughs> um. I would say anything hit by kind of well, yeah, well, that's fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, India anytime soon? Well, that's the other alternative for um, October. I might do some uh, some stuff on India. One of the videos I'm tempted to do is, um, and it's something a friend of mine brought up the other day, is what actually are the Napoleonic Wars? Um, and when when does a war in the Napoleonic Wars not you know become not a Napoleonic Wars war? So, for instance, um, you know the Battle of Versailles is I want to say eighteen o three. I think um, I think it's eighteen o three. Is it eighteen o five? I think it's eighteen o three. So um, you know that that's after Marengo. So. 
I mean, Marengo is definitely in a Pogliani battle. So if there's a battle after that, and, you know, it's got the Duke of Wellington as the commander, can you say that's not a uh, an Apollyonic -like battle? And, you know, if that is, well, what about the siege of Siring Patam? Is that an Apollyonic -like battle? I mean, I would argue yes. But again, I think there are a lot of people out there who, who don't. Um, I mean, the War of 1812 is another great example. Is the, is the War of 1812 part of the Napoleonic Wars? Now, I would argue yes, because the uh, Americans obviously used Britain's preoccupation to, uh, you know, to make a move on Canada. Uh, so I would say that, yes, you know, they're all part of the same thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's an interesting one. So... Uh, I can't say it was Napoleonic, even though it was East India Company mainly, so a private conflict. Yeah, exactly. But then, could you say that a war fought with mercenaries is part of the same thing? So would the Condottieri be part of the Italian wars? Or would... I, I don't know. It, it, it's, or, you know, the um, Carthaginians, would you say that um, uh, Scipio's conquest of Spain... Would that be part of the Second Punic War? I don't know. It's 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 an interesting one. Ultimately, I don't think it really matters, but it's uh, it's good it's good for debate. Uh, uh, have you heard the new Black Sails whole fast supplement will have a Black Powder crossover campaign? No, I haven't heard that. I did hear that the Ottomans are coming out as a as a navy. Now, when your fleet gets absolutely destroyed by the Russian Navy, you really don't have a very good fleet. But that's not the point. I love me some Zebex. So I will 1,000% be getting some uh, some Ottoman ships. Those Lantine sails that they've got, they're just, oh, they're just, they're just gorgeous. They're beautiful ships. Um, you know, they, they've come straight out of 1,001 Arabian Nights. They're just, oh, they're just, they're just amazing. Terrible, terrible ships. Uh, warships, anyway. Um, completely useless. But uh, they look great. I mean, let's face it, I'm painting up a, uh, a regiment of Spanish, so <laughs> efficacy is clearly not very high on my, uh, on my agenda at the moment. So I think that's pretty much them done. Now, I have to say, that looks like a real mess. I'm really not very impressed with how that green looks. Once I bang the uh, the green wash on them, hopefully, he said confidently, hopefully it will darken the green, it'll deepen the green, and uh, it'll make it pop a little bit more. But at the moment, I have to say, I'm not massively impressed. And that's not the fault of the minis. That's the fault of me and my, uh, my paint choice. And the original uniform. Maybe once I do the white of the cross straps, that will help them. That will help them pop as well. Maybe. Um, dum, 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 dum. Just looking around, I'm thinking I might actually. I've missed this guy's uh, cartridge pouch, haven't I? I'm thinking I may actually do the wash before I do the white. Because then again, if I get any on the cross straps, it's not the end of the world because I'm going to paint over it anyway. So again, I'm just sort of impressionistically uh, adding the green on here. Thinking about the back sails because they used to paint some French Guard Marines. Yeah, do it, do it now. The um, uh, the Russian uh, Marines of the Guard as well. I quite fancy doing some of those. Just something a little bit different. They uh, um, guarded the bridge at Borodino, so uh, they even actually did some fighting, which is uh, which is cool. I don't know if anyone does any models for them, but uh, was the Naps Wars the first true world war? Well, that's that's. I mean, that's sort of the the approach I'm going to take on a video. I think possibly not the first one. I think you could maybe argue that the Seven Years' War. Was um was the first world war, uh maybe uh less uh maybe you could argue maybe not because the the fronts weren't coordinated, but um I mean I you know the more I read about the second world war, the less coordinated I think those fronts were as well to be honest.
That is way too thick, that one. Blech. One thing I will say about the Napoleonic Wars, though, is that there were also battles fought in South America. And I don't remember there being any South American battles in um, uh, in the Seven Years' War, I have to say. But the, um, the battles around the River Plate and um, uh, the attack on Buenos Aires are, for me... Um, good candidates for uh, the Napoleonic Wars being a world war. Uh, world War was not really caused. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, World War One in Africa I find quite interesting. There's a, um, uh, a lady at my work who is Rhodesian. Now, she will not allow you to say she's Zimbabwean. She is, and she is, was born and will die a Rhodesian. Um, and she is from, well, she, her husband is from Namibia, uh, which was obviously a German, a German colony. And uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, so I didn't really know anything about Namibia. But to talk to him, yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, they've got the, uh, there's like a ghost town there. That's all like half buried in sand. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty epic. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, right, chaps. I am going to go and get this green wash. So I will be gone for a few a few a minutes or so. So talk amongst yourselves. Right, I'm back. <laughs> Time to talk 40k. Uh, guys, you can talk 40k if you want. The uh, the new 30k uh, box set looks quite interesting, actually. I'll probably be picking uh, picking that one up. Uh, Seven years all started in North America. There were battles in West Africa. I didn't know that. I knew there were battles in India. I didn't know there was um, uh, battles in uh, West Africa. That's interesting. Right, so for the green, I'm using uh, BL Tan. So that's the uh, the standard Games Workshop green wash. Now, as I say, it's quite dark, this one. I'm hoping it's going to differentiate the green against the white a little more you can turn the green from an apple green into more of like a bottle green but uh i don't necessarily mind that the overall uh, the overall effect is more interesting is more important to me than the uh, having the exact shade so there you go yeah i think uh i think comparing the two there The uh, the darker one, I think, looks a uh, a lot better. Yes, yeah, so the African uh, the African theatres are very uh, very under underserved. When I went to the Berlin Museum, they had quite a large um, large part of the exhibition was on the First World War in Africa, and uh, that was really interesting. They had sort of like pith helmets that they had. With the big imperial eagle on, were rather uh, rather impressive. Uh, with the new War Games Atlantic release of the boxes, I'm hoping that um, uh, that helps uh, spread some of the awareness of you know the certainly the, the colonial Germans 
Because remember, the Germans in the First World War, they were also fighting in the Far East as well. They, uh, the Chinese, uh, sorry, the uh, the Japanese captured um, Sing Tao from the uh, from the Germans at the end of the First World War. I also think they captured a lot of the Pacific Islands that the Americans would later fight over in the First World War as well. I seem to remember they uh, they captured quite a few of those from the uh, from the Germans because again you know they, they could pretty much do what they want the uh, the the uh, triple alliance they didn't really care and the uh, uh, sorry no the, yeah the triple alliance didn't really care what the uh, Japanese did and central powers had rather more important things to worry about than uh, than their Chinese uh, Chinese ports But uh, a British captain Senegal from the French. I did not know that. Really? Yeah. I was reading um, about a British um, Napoleonic, basically a British Napoleonic version of D-Day. Uh, the French were defending, uh, this is in Egypt, I think, uh, were defending the, uh, the shoreline. And the British were in you know, little rowboats. And they came ashore and stormed the uh, the heights overlooking the uh, the sea. So I can't remember which battle it was, but uh, that was quite an interesting one. I'd quite like to see uh, see a demonstration game of that. Maybe even play in uh, playing one. We'll just have to wean uh, wean Richie off uh, Waterloo then. You watched the King's Man, my life almost exploded on. <laughs> you know, I saw the King's Man actually. I quite enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I mean it's historically horrendous. But uh I thought Reese fans as uh uh Rasputin was absolutely superb. Much better than he was in Notting Hill, anyway, that's for sure. So I'm just uh, just going back over these guys. Just uh, it's a bit brush is a bit loaded. Do that one there. So let's just take some off. Let's run it down here. You know, I'm almost using the crease rather than the edge of the uh, the turn back just to let the uh, the green go in. As I say, it's more of a uh, uh, impressionistic uh, effort, shall we say? There we go. Now this one here, you can see I've got it on the cross straps there. It makes it look very blobby, but once I uh, once I go back over the cross straps, that'll uh, give it the definition that it needs to uh, to look better. He said confidently. Um, I stopped off at Senegal on my way to the Ascension and the Falklands. Oh, right, okay. Is it nice? It's uh, it's not somewhere I've ever particularly wanted to go, I have to say, but um, you know, I never particularly wanted to go to Hong Kong, so I moved there. So uh, I can't really uh, can't really say anything about it. Here we are. So let's uh, let's get down here. Video on War Games Illustrated at Abuki. Oh, it was a Battle of Abuki Bay. Right, okay, yeah, lovely. So, oh, cool. Oh, I shall check that out then. Um, my dad has a uh, War Games Illustrated Prime. So, uh, if I can't find it anywhere else, I'll have to uh, to borrow his iPad and uh, have a look. I'm sure I'll be spending more time with him than I would wish over the uh, Easter weekend. So, nah, I'm joking. Uh, it was hot and it smelled. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. Uh, I mean, that's pithy. I like it. That's that is a good, a uh, uh, good review. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's good. I like it. Uh, just uh, quickly uh, doing the back again. I'm not necessarily massively concerned about the back here. Uh, this wash is just to uh, to get the colours to pop. 
and obviously from the back it's not as important as it is from the front uh, a large part of the backs are going to be taken up by their uh, their packs that they've got on so um that's going to be quite nice because that's going to uh, to break up the colors there there we go with the wash now dried i am much much happier than um than i was before yeah Uh, someone suggested using a bit of cardboard to uh, make my, my camera focus. Just why I put my hand behind it usually. But uh, I think it's just that the autofocus on this camera is shit. Um, yes. So, anyway, so that's them. Let's, uh, let's crack on with these bad boys. Uh, uh, lots of variety in that early Dutch campaign. Russians, French, Batavians, Brits all have great choices, even within each nation. Yeah, no, that's a fair shout. The Batavian Republic's an interesting, uh, interesting faction as well. Actually, they've got some uh, some groovy uniforms. The more I think about it, the more I'm going to do um, do some Cleve uh, Cleve Berg lancers. Uh, yeah, just the more. Uh, I mentioned them before. I've painted a regiment of Dutch lancers using the Victrix um, guard lancers, and I, again, not the fault of the figures. It was more me. They were one of the least fun regiments I think I've ever painted because I was really worried about getting every single bit right because they were so nice. So I didn't really enjoy painting them. But uh, I think with Cleve Berg, the uh, the pink might. Uh, it pushed me along a little bit more, and there uh, just it'd be nice to have something different. Oh, I didn't do the top of his uh, his cuff, did I? That was uh, a bit of a fail. Now normally, I'd just bang the uh, the green wash on there and be done, but because he's the standard bearer, he's going to be a focal point of the uh, of the unit. So I'd better uh, I'd better do him properly, hadn't I really? It's all he deserves. The amount of money this guy's paid for his commission, the uh, the least I can give him is uh, a properly painted cuff. So, uh, there we go. So by the time we get to the far end, hopefully that'll be tried. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Okay, is that um, what is that Chinese or or something else? I don't I don't know that one. There we go, let's go down there. I think the Grenadier bag was ready. Yeah, I think it probably was as well, if I'm honest. That's why I'm not uh, not touching it now. I'll do a bit more research on that. But I think you're right. I've never seen a green one. Uh, I've seen plenty of red ones. I know the Zamoras had black. Um, but I think everyone else had red. Uh, Boots on the Table Channel did a Cleesburg force for sharp practice. All right, okay. I might have to check that one out as well. Then. You know what? I'm just going straight over the uh, the strap on that one. I'll uh, I'll worry about that one in a bit. So let's get the uh, turn max done. There we are. Well, I think with the facings, these guys are really coming alive, actually. I think today, what time are we on now? Uh, five to seven. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to run a little bit late. I want to get the, um, the straps done. don't think the straps are going to take very long. I'm not going to necessarily paint the straps. It'll be very similar to what I'm doing here. It'll be an almost impressionistic take on the straps. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get those guys done before we, uh, before we finish. Hello, Boots on the Table. There you go. He's, you've summoned him. We were just uh, just talking about you, brother. Saying that uh, your channel had a uh, a Cleve, uh, Cleve Berg uh, sharp practice uh, force. Yeah. He's done. Where he's got his arms crossed like this, that should uh, really show up the... Uh, the facings there, that would be quite nice. Uh, 
ROTK is a normalized history from hand chai. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, again, the hand hand chai is not something I know a huge amount about. One of my favorite um, podcasts, and it's also on YouTube as well, is um, The Fall of Civilizations. If you've not heard it, do yourself a favor and check it out. It's absolutely incredible. So there's 13 episodes at the moment. They, they come out, they take about six months to come out. It's a bit of a hardcore history thing, but they're very, very good. And um, they did one on the Han Dynasty, and I didn't really know anything about it. Uh, but the uh, the one they did on the, the collapse of the Han was very, very good. Highly, highly recommend that channel. That's uh, The Fall of Civilizations. It's by a chap called Paul Cooper. He's got a very good, he's got a very good voice as well. Uh, is it, if you like hardcore history, it's much more um, it's much slower than hardcore history. It's not quite as uh, brash, shall we say? Um, but uh, no, it's very very good. In fact, on my way home today, I was listening to the end of the episode they did on, uh, who was it, um, the, the Mayans, uh, or the, the episode they did on the Mayan Collapse. I started listening to the episode on the Chemia and Angkor Wat and all that cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, I didn't get very far into it. I mean, I've listened to them all before, but uh, I'm just listening to them again because they're, uh, they're that good. Uh, I have the odd tendency for small and polite nations, Cleve, Wurtberg, Swedes, Neapolitans, uh, plus Brunswick and Nassau. Yeah, no, you, you know what? I was thinking the other day, I can't remember the last time I painted French infantry. Uh, I'm doing almost anything I can to avoid painting French infantry. Christ, I'm even painting Spanish. That's how desperate it is. The... Right, let's get these turn max here done. There we go. And there we go. What's this one here? Oh, I should say as well, I received in the post yesterday... Now, I could have 3D printed it myself, but to be perfectly honest, I couldn't be asked. Uh, so I bought an accessory to go onto the, uh, the the command base for my uh, my Spanish officer. So uh, it's, it was actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So he may end up having to become the Supreme Commander. But uh, I just had him originally down as a... Uh, as a brigade commander, but he may end up being like Le Romano himself, which would be a little bit harsh because it's a little bit of a jokey, uh, jokey thing. And Le Romano was actually pretty good, but uh, but still, it's all it's all just in good fun. There we go. And just uh, yep, no, that's done. Cool, right? Happy with that. So I'm going to do a final, um, uh, a final quick go over of the cross straps. Oh, hang on, I needed to do the uh, top of the standard bearer's cuff, didn't I? You're enjoying the French? No, that's good. I, it's, I, I enjoy the French too. It's just I've done so many of them that uh, I, I should get back into them. Really, this weekend I'm thinking of, uh, of crashing out some Russians. I um. I'm going to change all my, uh, one of the, uh, the uh, one of the, uh, the great friends of the channel, he's been going on at me for a long time, and he's right to do so, to um, sort my Russian battalions out, to have the um, uh, grenadiers as part of the infantry battalions, so uh, I need to do that, so I may end up painting those guys this weekend, but we'll see. We've been working on some South Essex, yay, love to see it. We've been printing some of Piano Wargames Württembergers. They are phenomenal minis. They're really, really nice. I've got about, um, I've probably got about 200 of them, uh, like 80% done uh, painting-wise. I just need to uh, to go over the top and finish them all. 
To be honest, I should really be finishing them instead of painting these Spanish. But, uh, well, there you go. Right, now, this Games Workshop White, as I said, is absolutely dreadful. Let's see if there's any life in it at all. Doesn't look like it. Let's see if I can uh, use my magic to, uh, to get some life into it. I believe my brother calls it Reactivator. Uh, my brother's the uh, the painter in the family. Uh, let's, let's try and get light on this brush, shall we? Oh, over here. Oh, let's see if this one's any better. I doubt it. Oh, no, it is actually. All right, okay. We'll use that one then. Um... Only all the English and French pi pirates piratesto to paint a crack con don wish me luck. Okay. Just paint a Wurttemberg six foot Yeah, you know what? I think in about uh, six months' time the world is gonna be awash with Wurttemberg armies. Which is cool, man. That's, that's really good. I'm annoyed that it makes my um Maxi Minis how to make plastic Wurttemberg cavalry. Uh, a bit obsolete, but uh, no, I don't mind. That's a small price. To... There we go. Right. This is turning to be far more difficult than it needed to be. All right. There we are. Right. Let's wipe that brush off. I'm putting off researching the Maharatan troops for my six mil Asai. Yeah, there's not a huge amount on them, I have to say. I've just bought a book, actually, on the Indian armies, um, which I'm quite looking forward to, to digging into. But uh, I'm not entirely sure how much detail is going to be in there. He's doing Hessians and Versberg, is he? I've got no idea, to be honest. Uh, quite possibly. Uh, put it this way, whatever he does, uh, it'll be... Uh, it'll, I'll be shutting up and taking my money. So, right. So, let's just quickly uh, bash the straps on these. On there. Just on there. As I say, the idea here is to make the straps, again, we're going to, I'm going to use that word, make the straps pop. Make them stand out from the, uh, the rest of the mini. Now, I can see I'm going to need to tidy up some of the green. That's fine. Not going to use this white to do that. I'm going to try and resist using the white. I want to use this really just for the straps and nothing else. There we go. I've also uh, been looking at the bicorns, and I'm fairly sure that the bicorns are just all black and there's no uh, no border to them. So I'm still holding off until I get absolute confirmation on that. But uh, I think I'll be uh, hitting those guys with the, uh, the black contrast paint at some point and just finishing off the, uh, the bicorns. Hessian's next. Cool. Yeah, no, no that's really good. I'll certainly, uh, certainly be getting some of those then. So uh, before we go, guys, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, the stream, I'm thinking of knocking it back an hour to start at seven o'clock, um, so whatever British time we're in. So it'll be seven o'clock BST at the moment. When winter comes, winter is coming. When uh, winter comes, I'm gonna probably have to not do these anyway. Because by the time I finish work, the lighting is going to be so dreadful that uh, I'm not going to be able to do it. I could use artificial light, but it always looks a bit uh, a bit put when you do that. So uh, what would people think? I can either do crack, carry on at 6 o'clock or uh, move it to 7 o'clock and go a little bit longer. It'll mean that I can have my dindins beforehand. And, uh, and I won't just be thinking about, uh, about feeding... So let me know what you think. Um, 
7 o'clock uh, would be the new time. Or keep it at 6, which is what we currently do. Uh, let me... If you pop it in the comments now, then uh, it'll give me a good uh, a good idea. I'm seeing some people coming on to the uh, the stream now, so maybe seven o'clock would be a better uh, a better time. My next project will be the army of inner Austria for muskets and tomahawks. Okay, but the regular army that fought in the Tyrol. Now that's cool. Much shout out. My latest discovery of a band called the Full Horn Elk. <laughs> right before I left, I finished my last Hanoverian battalion. Finally finished to finally complete Picton's Brigade. Fantastic. Needed a break from red. <laughs> so as soon as I get I'm going to finish my second Portuguese line. Yes, no, that's cool. Uh, very well done. Uh, oh, Picton's Fighting Third. Uh, an excellent choice of, uh, of brigade as well, or division, I should say. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go over here. Twenty-one likes. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the uh, uh, the old thumbs ups. Just after lunch, there. Oh yeah, no, that's fair enough. Uh, and then I'm going to do this last strap here. I'm just going through them. This guy I've not done. So as you can see, I'm not uh, not necessarily going absolutely hog wild on these straps. The idea is just to uh, just to make them pop out a little bit. It doesn't, and the main thing is to clean up where the uh, where the facings have gone onto the straps. So he needs that one doing. Is that on camera? Uh, And then there. He's a nice model, actually. I like him. He's a nice, uh, nice pose. He's definitely a front, uh, front rank material. Uh, that chap. Some of these other poses may uh, may find themselves relegated to the rear ranks, but uh, not him. He's a fine fellow. So, pop there. Quickly uh, spin him around. Is there anything I want to do on the back here? I'm not too bothered about the ones that go to the bayonet frogs. Quickly, uh, quickly bash those. I'm not going to, uh, not going to go wild on them. I'm probably going to have to do the back of these again anyway when I do the uh, the packs right there here. I've missed his uh, his facing. That's annoying. So I'm just going to go straight in with the wash on this one. I'm not going to, uh, not going to mess about. There we go. That one quite thick. This one I've not washed either. There we go. Not one I think I have, but you can have a bit more. 7 p.m. is better for me, but there's more regular than me. Well, that's cool. 7 is good. The stream starts at 7 to 6. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hello, my breath. Uh, right, so that's that one, Dune. So that's all those guys busted. Happy with them. And let's quickly do these. Now, the officers, I'm going to spend a little bit more effort on. Uh, despite the fact that these standard bears will probably end up in the second rank, uh, I still want to do a little bit of extra, uh, extra on them. So there we go. Paint the old cup for the uh, for the flag. There we go. Pop them in there. Cure. Right now, this grenadier, where on earth are his straps? Um, all right, yeah. Straight over there. And up and over his shoulder there. And he's got the other one just tucked down. There we are. Reguid. So this one, the same pose. And then another front rank uh, candidate here. There we are. Let's 
Let's correct that there. Looks like I've missed the wash on his uh, his cuff. Just turn up the camera for a bit of a uh, uh, Gonzo uh, Gonzo film running gun there. Yeah. Well, I think this brush might be uh, needing a bit of a rest as well. It's starting to uh, starting to go a bit wide. Sorry for uh, going a bit quiet here, guys. I'm just uh, just concentrating on these uh, uh, these more finer finer areas. Bash that over there. Right, so with this penultimate dude, there we are. We move on to the final guy. Let's tuck that around there. And this guy. And then I think I'm probably going to knock it on the head for today. So there we are. Well, I think we had some good, uh, some good discussions today about the First World War. Was it the the Polyonic Wars or was it the Seven Years' War? That was cool. About the meanings of what a minor nation is. Some, uh, uh, we heard about some interesting smaller nations that people have been working on. So I'll quickly just, uh, to be honest, I don't think the Bailey Frog needs doing on any of these. Maybe this strap here. Put the, uh, over there. Ah, yes, the back of the officers. I'll do those as well. It's particularly important on the back of these officers because they don't have a pack. So uh, to break up the sea of white is going to be quite uh, quite useful. So there we go. Well, that is it for today, chaps. Thank you very, very much for joining me. We've had more thumbs up than we've currently got viewers. So thank you for that. That's the facings on these uh, Spaniards done. I'm going to have a look at the, the bags and see what colour they should be. Um, but next time, we're probably going to touch up the, the white cloth. We'll try and do the um, the bear skins then. I don't know, they're seal skins. And we may even try and do the metal on the muskets, although that might be a little bit too much to get in one session. But thank you very much for joining me. And uh, this weekend... The video, I'm not 100% sure what the video is going to be this weekend. Um, so look forward to that. You guys will be as surprised as me. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Bye.